Well, hello friends. Welcome back to the program. Uh, today we're going to pick up a, a neglected app that we haven't been touching for a while, and that's going to be the Pixel Paint application. So uh, we had a little sprint where we worked on it a couple of weeks ago, uh, but then it's just been lying here since then. And I figured today we would do some, some more work on it. So um, first thing I noticed here is that um, I tried to make a new layer and um, I can't type every letter into the name box. So foo does not work because O is um, a keyboard shortcut for the color picker. So uh, that's really goofy. Um, the fact that keyboard shortcuts for this window uh, are eating my keystrokes when I'm in this window. Uh, so we gotta investigate that. And then I would like to have some kind of um, layer opacity uh, controls so that uh, maybe when you select a layer here, uh, it would, um, we would have like a little layer properties um, panel here or something. I'm not exactly sure, but I uh, figured we could add one of those. And, um, uh, and you know, there's, there's all kinds of stuff, kinds of stuff I would like to do. I would also like to have a, like a um, tool properties. So when you select the pen, you would have the tool properties show up somewhere. Um, and I'm not exactly sure where they should show up. I'm thinking maybe we would, uh, instead of having the tools laid out like this, we would put them like in, um, I don't know, like a three column grid or something like that. And then we could make it a little wider and have space for tool properties below. I'm not sure. Um, and I don't know which of those things we're going to do today, but we're going to start with figuring out uh, what this whole thing is about, that I can't type foo here, because obviously I want to be able to type foo. So uh, before we can get started though, I'm just going to set up um, a auto start thingy so that system server starts up a pixel paint instance for me. Because um, I, I should always be doing this kind of thing, it's just I forget. So. Um, See how that works. Uh, oh, sometimes you have to rerun CMake. Okay, so yeah, this is perfect. Starts up uh, right away, and then let's look at that uh, keyboard shortcut thing. So, how the heck do we register those in the first place? So that one was called Color Picker. Okay, so the toolbox widget in the Pixel Paint app um, has a bunch of tools. Uh, here mm -hmm. they are. The color picker is one such tool. Here we pass a keyboard shortcut to add tool uh, right here. And then that shortcut is passed along to the tool button. Okay, and then tool button class uses the shortcut for stringifies it to make it part of the tooltip. That's fine. And then we create an action. And I bet you that this action is where things go goofy. So the action is not scoped at all. Um, when you create an action, you have an optional last parameter here where you can pass in the scope of the action. And the scope determines um, like how widely available the action is, right? So in our case, uh, we don't want this action to be available uh, outside of this window. So we, we need to scope it to the window we're in, but um, we don't know the window we're in at this point because we are in a widget constructor. So that's a little bit awkward. Um, so what's the easy fix here? I guess one thing we could do is we could pass in the window. Um, or wait, do we maybe know the window? I guess the toolbox widget, has it been added to a window? Let's find out. Let's just try to scope it to window if possible. Um, no such thing. Sure, maybe I didn't include window.h. Let's do window. All right. And 
just um, just to make sure that we're not um, doing something dumb here. Let's see. Uh, okay, that crashes because we don't have a window yet at that point. Okay, so not super great. Um, so who is creating the toolbox widget? Pixel paint main. Okay, so we add a toolbox widget here. And is that toolbox widget constructor setting all these up? Right, so um, one thing we could do here is we could be a little bit cheeky and just add these later. <laughs> um, so we could we could add the tools a little bit later, and then the window will be available. Um, it's a little bit weird. I don't hate it. So let's try it. Uh, so we just do a deferred invocation and um, call all of this stuff soon. Uh, in fact, we could even do uh, setup tools. We can do this just to be nice. Okay, and um, cool. cannot do that because deferred invoke has a parameter that I forgot. Okay. So here we go. The key bind still works. I still can't type foo. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, wait, shit. Did I, um, no, the window is here, but now we should at least not fail if we assert window. Hmm. But is it? Um, that's interesting. Oh, that crashes. Oh, okay. So we did, we still don't have a window. Um. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Dang it. Uh, we're in the tool button constructor. Um. Right. So I have to say toolbox that window. Okay. A little bit. Weird, but but that should be okay. So then, still can't type O, <laughs> but at least now we know that it is scoped to the window. Then something else goes wrong. So let's see how this works. If we go in the action constructor um, and see what it does with the parent. Uh, wait, which constructor is this? Checkable. Create checkable. So we have a true at the end here. Um, well, there are all these different constructors. All of these end with checkable. Um, I don't love that this one here is the only one that sets up the shortcut stuff. Oh wait, but this one delegates to this one. And these ones don't have a shortcut argument. Okay, never mind. So let's see. So we should end up here that we have a parent, and um, it is a window. So let's log something here. Uh, shortcut action with shortcut shortcut dot to string. Can we even do this? I don't remember. Nope. Okay. Um, registered as window local. Okay. Let's just log all of these. We can see what's going on. And application global. Um, 
Okay, so what's going on? Did we register O as application global? Well, well, well. So these are the M and N and O. These are definitely the, um, these guys right here. So it's move, pen, bucket fill. Um, okay, so these jerks. Hmm. Why are they ending up like that? Application global. Um, is window parent, wait, how does that work? Is uh, GUI window, is GUI window, we ask is window. Okay. And presumably that's true in window.h, yes. Okay. Hmm. Wait. Okay, so then I guess let's log some more stuff. Parent is uh, parent. And I think that will print out the class name if I'm not mistaken. We have. Uh, oh, no, 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 we need to pass an, a reference, so my bad. So we'll do that. Um, no. Yeah. We're not keeping this stuff anyway, so... Just hacking something so we can see what's going on here. It's good to fix issues with uh, keyboard shortcuts and stuff like that. Like uh, clearly, it makes the whole system better if, if these things work better. So, action with shortcut O registers application global parent is a window. Well, that's very suspicious because parent is a window, but we don't end up in this branch. So something here is not working right. Um, oh, dude, is wait, is this being swallowed by a forward declare? Oh, mm, that's not cool. So if we don't forward declare window, hmm, that is not uh, very nice. So this is mac or uh, not macro. This is function, which is supposed to answer. Um, like whether a core object is a certain thing. Um, this is how the, the fallback works, right? Like, so it's, it's just um, uh, for any object AMP, um, it will say false. But if you, if you're passing it window, which uh, is an object, but if you've only forward declared it, you don't know that it's a core object. So it's taking the fallback here and returning false, even though it is a window. Um, oh, I don't like that. Maybe we can, um, hmm. let's see. So is window is already a thing here. Oh, you know what, let's, let's not get um, super carried away with that. Now I can type ooh here, so that's good. And yeah, they still work here, and they work here. So that's that's very stupid. Hmm. Okay, we need to come up with a better solution for those. Um but I'm not exactly sure what that is right in this very moment. But um, let's uh, let's make a note of that in Prima. So um, file a bug about uh, core is D not working right when you are only seeing a forward declared t example core is window um, fail 
even if object is a window. If we don't, if we don't have um, lib GUI window.h included. Not good. Okay, so um, for now, let's just patch up the action class and uh, what do we say here? Uh, fix uh, up, um, window scoped make uh, window parented actions actually scoped to the window. Um, we were relying on core as window to tell us whether the um, parent of an action um, is a window. This didn't work since we only saw a forward. Wait, that fits here. Uh, declaration of GUI window in this case, an action CVP. Um, this is a very um, unfortunate flaw in the is t pattern, and uh, we should solve it somehow, but not in this patch. Okay, and then the toolbox widget. So now we instantiate the tools slightly later so that we can um, scope them, they add um, dual actions to the window. Excellent. Uh, create um, tool actions slightly later, so, or not, let's just say scope tool actions to the containing window. Um, we achieve this by deferring the construction of the tool buttons until uh, the toolbox widget has been added to a window. Okay, so that is, both of these patches are slightly awkward, but mm, we'll, we'll keep going forward. So then we had um, that I want to have some sort of layer properties on the right-hand side. So let's see what that's going to be like. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I just have to reorient myself and how the UI is laid out. Um, but we can use the inspector app to do that. It's actually possibly the nicest way of doing it. So pit of pixel paint in Spectre 8. <gasps> what? Oh, wait, is that not running as me? Or who's running it then? Pixel paint. Oh, root is running that. Oh, I, yeah, because I added it to system server. Okay. Well, I'll just inspect it as root then. So. Uh, let's see, so here's our window, here's the main widget. Okay, so the main widget has a horizontal layout, then we have the toolbox widget, a widget here containing the editing area, and then a widget on the right-hand side um, containing currently the layer list widget. Okay, and it's in a vertical box layout. So I'm thinking we'll just add something um, maybe to the bottom here. Um, I think that might be nice. So let's see. Let's make a new widget. We'll call it the 
layer properties widget. Okay, and we will add it to the CMake file. Okay, and then name space pixel paint layer properties widget is a final GUI widget. Um, yeah, I think that will be good. And then we'll just grab widget here. And what is this thing going to have? It's going to have, um, I guess we'll start with like an opacity slider. Might be the, um, the most obvious thing. So we can have like opacity and maybe um, you know, like a toggle visibility on off. So you can quickly like see what it looks like without a, one of the layers. Visibility seems important. Um, maybe like, um, like read only or like, uh, something where you like prevent it from being edited. Uh, we'll see. My, my nose is so itchy today. It's, <laughs> excuse me. Um, so let's see, let's put some, some checkboxes and stuff. So we'll have a GUI checkbox for um, visible checkbox, Vis visibility checkbox. Yeah, and then we'll put a slider. Um, wait, how do these work again? Horizontal slider, yeah, yeah that's the name of it. Uh, horizontal slider. Oh, that's not um, opacity slider, let's say. So this thing should be forward declared in the GUI. So we should go to GUI forb and um, the alphabet uh, here. <laughs> horizontal slider. And I guess we can add vertical slider as well. Okay, so we'll um, make a separate commit for that. GUI and um, horizontal vertical slider to the uh, GUI to the forwarding header. And uh, actually that makes me realize that I think our shell doesn't do this yet. Um, foo bar as, nope, it doesn't do that. So here is a feature request to whoever is watching. It would be nice if the shell would expand um, that type of construct. So I can do this, foo bar as, and it will become foo bas bar bas. Um, but total side note, <laughs> just, I noticed that if I, uh, if I say things that I wish the shell would do sometimes in videos, then the next day there's a pull request doing that. Uh, so <laughs> just trying my luck here. Um, so let's see. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll just go with these. And um, if we maybe want to put some like decoration that says like layer properties or something, but that doesn't, we don't need to keep track of that. So uh, then and in addition to that, we need a constructor. Uh, parent and I guess we should do a um, virtual destructor and put that out of line since we have forward declared types. Okay, so let's make the implementation. Did I mess that up? The layer properties widget. Um, so we'll call it the base, and there we are. Wait, 
what does the widget constructor take for its RM? Oh, it doesn't take anything. Ugh, it's been so long since I've made um <laughs> since I have made a new widget. So we don't even take the parent anymore. Wow. It's, it'll come back to me. Okay, okay, okay. So fine, I guess that's how it works now. I I now I remember I removed that the need to pass a parent at some point when we moved from reference counted or moved from magically uh, kept the live widgets to reference counted widgets which I'm really happy with by the way because uh, the previous uh, lifetime model of widgets was confusing unless you had a black belt in uh, Qt which not everybody does um, so let's see Okay, so I guess we'll just um, set up some widgets here. So let's see, uh, the visibility. Let's put a label first, actually. And we'll need a layout as well. So a box layout. And we'll grab a label and a checkbooks and a slitter. All right, and then set layout vertical box layout mm, oh gooey right and then let's add a label a sorry a gooey label my bad uh, and it will say layer properties I guess I don't know um, Maybe we could even um, set font graphics, font default, bold font. Yeah, we can make it bold. Might be nice. And then we will add a, let's do, let's do the opacity slider. So let's see that we can start by just putting the slider, I guess, without labeling it, but then maybe later we should also label it. So um, opacity slider is add GUI horizontal slider. Um, and then we'll set the range from zero through 100. And I guess, I mean, really, that's it. Okay, and then the checkbox. So, um, visibility checkbox, add, GUI check. Man, it's been a while since I was doing this kind of programming, but this is really nice. So, okay, and then this is our UI. I guess we should title this thing, so we'll just say uh, visible. Um, so let's see how this looks like. Also, we need to add it to the, um, to the interface so that it shows up. Um, and then, of course, you know we need to actually hook it together with the layer list so that when you choose a layer, it updates the uh, things and everything. Um, but one thing at a time, so layer list widget here is in the right panel. So like I was saying, we just put it below him. Layer properties widget is right panel add pixel paint layer properties widget. Okay, and then how is all of this set up? So layer list widget is called to switch between layers. Sure. On active layer change, we do blah blah blah. Um on active layer change. So I think here uh, we can we can probably do the, the um, notification here. So when the active layer changes in the image editor, we'll just say layer properties widget set selected layer, or even just set layer. Right? So we'll notify him that way. And um, wait, is that a thing here? 
pixel paint forward. No. Well, there is a layer class. So we will have an API. It's like set layer. Okay, and then how do we point to it? I guess a weak pointer might be the easiest. Wait, what do we normally do? So layer is ref counted and um, the layer list widget. Do you have ref putters or weak putters? Weak? No. Ref putter to the image. Uh, okay, so we are just going to use a reference counting pointer here. Just um, Or you know what, we should use a, a weak pointer because if the layer goes away, the properties widget should not hold on to it. Yeah. I don't know what I was thinking. So weak pointer is good. And then um, set layer, layer. Okay, so if M layer is layer, that's a no op. Otherwise, Mm, M layer is layer, and then um, make weak pointer. Okay, and we need the layer class, sure. Oh, it cannot be weakly pointed to? Well, that's about to change. Also, a public weakable layer. Cool. Okay, so now that we have that, we'll say if let's see, maybe we'll do something like set enable false. Uh, so we'll true, and then here we'll just nuke the controls so that they don't show anything interesting. Mm. If you have, if you don't have a layer selected, we'll just yeah, we'll just disable this for now. Um, and if you have a layer selected, then we will do um, set value layer um, capacity. Aha. Okay, so that doesn't exist yet, but we'll we'll add it. And then also the visibility checkbox layer is visible should also be a thing. Okay, so we'll add those things to layer. Um, I guess we should have a float. So, mm. or you know what? Um, let's let's go with like um, one through a uh, zero through a hundred for now. So hundred, just because it's a bit easier in the UI sense to not use a floating point because we don't have a floating point slider. So int opacity. Um, maybe we should call it percent opacity. Mm. Opacity percent. Yeah, let's call it that because the Painter API has opacity, but it's a float between zero and one. So, hmm. Do I like this? Do I like what I'm doing right now? Um, 
Yeah, I'm okay with it. Actually, I guess when this changes, we need to do some kind of notification. So we'll do like that. And likewise, we'll put this out of line as well. Okay, so layer CPP set visible if m visible is visible turn okay and then image layer um wait how do you know how do we do this do we know our image send out a notification here so image has image client and image client knows stuff like layer was added so we have to modify layer we have to modify layer stack so did modify layer is very good currently we send that out when you modify the bitmap of a layer. So I guess um, this is also modifying a layer, right? You're modifying the um, metadata. But let's consider that a kind of layer modification. Um, so for this, we really, it's annoying that we don't have a pointer to the image here. Should we bind layers to images? I remember uh, thinking about this in the past and feeling like I didn't want to do that because it would create all these ties between the two. So at the same time, Okay, I don't know what I was thinking in the past. Let's just uh, let's just bind layers to an image, and then we'll we'll deal with that later if that becomes an issue. So image yeah. Did modify bitmap doesn't need to take the image anymore because he already knows his image but we can fix that up in a separate change um, the important part here is that we can call m image did um, which one do we call layer uh, did modify billet yeah oh, properties let's say the same for uh, opacity percent okay and yeah actually so we'll pass ourselves to that thing did modify properties. And for now, I think we don't need to do anything in particularly interesting here. We can just, oops, um, we can just do basically the same as did modify bitmap. Um, probably. Um, Should we share the code? But maybe this is okay for now. Um, so what do we have? Oh yeah, yeah, like all of those calls to set up this now need to pass the image when we create layers. But that's I think that's gonna be okay. 
then we have here and image editor image. Wait, what's wrong with this? Oh, it's a dot. Okay, so layer um, properties widget, opacity percent, and not set value, set visible. Or no, not set visible, set checked. It's a checkbox. So I think this will be pretty good. It's nice to hack on this kind of stuff um, after doing, <laughs> doing so much emulator uh, hacking. So let's see. I totally forgot what I was even working on. Oh yeah, the layer properties. <laughs> okay, so here they are. They look a little bit goofy. Um, and of course they don't do anything yet, but we can switch between here. Oh, and they just reset. Mm. I guess we need to we need to make sure that we actually update the selected layer. So um, let's see. We'll say opacity slider on value changed. Capture this. Um, does this thing receive the new value? Yes, it does. New value or just value. Um, M layer set opacity percent value. Cool. And visibility checkbox set visible. Um, wait, 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 wait. On checked. I think this is the API for this, so that would be logical. Um, if M layer, M layer set visible checked. Yes, gets the bool there. Beautiful. So I guess we should also do something with these properties. So uh, let's see, layer stack. How do we paint the layer stack? In the image class, if I recall correctly. Uh, paint into, yes, here we go. So image paint into, the way it works is just traverses the layer stack from back to front and paints the layers. So um, here to respect the visibility, what we can do is just to say if layer uh, is visible, if not visible, then just skip over it. Uh, and then do we have an opacity argument here for draw scale the bitmap? Um, it seems like maybe we don't. All right, so that's something we'll have to deal with. In a moment, but uh, right now, let's just see if we can at least turn the visibility of these things on and off. Yes, we can, although <laughs> the outline remains. Um, that might not be what we want. So let's see here. So visible layers should not have an outline. Um, so who does this? Oh wait, it's the active layer. Oh wait, back up. Let's see. So if you do have a selected layer, it's not visible, but you have selected it, maybe it's okay that we show the outline, but it goes away when you do that, right? And then you can turn it back on and it's there. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So let's turn off all the layers, even the background, and look at that. We are just here. And I'm actually moving the invisible background layer. Um, I'm unsure if I like that. Maybe I do. Mm. Anyway, uh, I think that's a pretty good 
start. Of course, the widget layer properties widget looks pretty horrendous. So let's see if we can also fix it so we can draw the opacity. Draw a scale bitmap. Um, okay, so it doesn't have any opacity business. Hmm. And then it has all these different variants. Do draw scale bitmap, which is this template right here. Okay. Sure. Pretty typical business. Um, and if, wait, if has alpha channel, then blend. Okay, so we do blend already if there's alpha. Um, opacity, so what do we do with opacity? Alpha is 255 times opacity. So what do we do with that? Source with alpha. Oh, so we put the override alpha in the source and... Oh, I see. Um... That doesn't, doesn't seem perfect. Like if you already have um, alpha in your source, but I think maybe we'll just do a hack here to get this working. And this thing, the painter class needs uh, needs a bunch of work to have less duplication for one thing, and also to have like more uniform support for features. Like it would be good if all the APIs um, could do floating point, if they could uh, deal with opacity, line thickness, uh, transforms, all these kind of things. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done on the painter. Um, but we'll see, we'll see what happens with that because um, earlier today there was a pull request with work on SVG support started for the browser. So uh, I think anyone working on SVG is going to find themselves working on Painter <laughs> sooner or later. So maybe, we'll, maybe there are improvements around the corner here. We'll see what happens. Otherwise, I'll, I'll probably end up uh, spending some time on this sooner or later. But we'll see. Because um, I, I certainly don't want to take away from anyone who, who uh, finds something interesting. Like, I'm happy if people work on stuff they find interesting. So let's let's just slap an opacity argument here. So actually, we'll, we'll default it in the declaration. Draw scale bitmap flow at opacity. All right. And then um, forward that there. And then I guess we do that thing here. So like UA alpha is source alpha. I mean, that's such a hack. Let's, um, let's forward it to the target function here, so opacity, or the helper function, whatever we call it. Oopsie doopsie. I remember when I originally um, built all these templates for uh, fast scale drawing. It was uh, it was when uh, um, one of the very early adopters of the system sent me in this demo, the fire demo. Uh, someone named PD, and then I don't know what happened to PD. Um, I haven't heard from him or her in a very long time. But um, but when PD was making this thing, it was pretty sluggish um, because of the the fact that it's scaling up. So then I made this big template here that detects that you're doing um, integer scaling and we can take all these interesting shortcuts and that made it really fast. So it was pretty cool. Anyway, um, 
So now here we also get the flow at opacity. Okay, and then, then we need to forward the opacity to integer scale bitmap, possibly. So let's see, source pixel. And then here, I mean, this is so silly, but um, if opacity or um, mm, okay, this is not the way this should be done, but we're going to do it this way now. Wait, what does get pixel return? It's, okay. And it's get pixel, get pixel. Okay, so bitmap get pixel returns a color. Okay. So I guess we can just say set alpha source alpha. Yeah, something like that. Um, we should um, we should somehow like mash together like multiply the source alpha with. Um, the uh, override opacity that's being specified, but for some reason, I don't want, I don't know exactly how to do that right now, and I don't want to get caught up in doing it. But we will definitely have to come back to that. Um, for now, we'll just do this. Just use it as an override. so many um, variants of like blitting an image the API here is really really um, it's like very bloated right because we have many different ways to say the same thing and there's we need to we need to do stuff with this like blitz scaled um, what is even the difference between blitz scaled and draw scale bitmap I don't think I've ever seen blitz scaled what is even blitz scale? It's used in one place. Oh, I guess you specify like scale like 2x or whatever. I don't even remember that. Uh, but like stuff like that, uh, I think we should we should achieve scaling, rotation, uh, translation, all these kind of things we should do with transforms. Um, we need something that has a transform inside and then you can you can like manipulate that transform and then you can uh, the result will come out scaled and rotated and whatever but um, that's not where we are yet so let's chunk the opacity um, I don't know if that actually I didn't care because I'm am I even specifying the opacity when I paint draw scale bitmap no I'm not so here we need to um, flow at and divide by 100, just to make sure we get that um, 0 through 1 float opacity that he expects. Okay. Ooh, ooh, it works. Ooh. Okay, so let's um, move them on top of each other and check it out. That's pretty neat. Um, 
And I'm not, I'm not sure that we're actually doing the blending correctly. Um, it's not something I'm super familiar with. So I kind of just um, hacked it together um, from my best understanding. But I think someone told me a long time ago that the color blending is, is not um, correct. So that's something that we should probably look into um, sooner or later, if, <laughs> since we're, we do want to have um, like a competent image editor here in the system, right? So it's good if if it actually blends things correctly. But uh, opacity here is very, very cool. Let's tweak the opacity on the background layer. Very nice. Okay, all right. So let's see. Let's just um, first do the painter thing. So lip graphics, add an opacity argument to Painter draw scale map. This API is not super perfect as it uh, merely overrides the source alpha on all source pixels instead of uh, blending the alpha values. Um, there is room for improvement here for sure. Uh, okay, and then I guess let's add the pixel paint stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna make the dialogue look nicer very soon. Add a simple uh, or no, um, allow, add a GUI for uh, editing opacity and visibility of layers. Also, I'll make the renderer rendering layer stack uh, rendering uh, respect opacity and visibility. Oh, it doesn't fit. Um, maybe actually, like when we do a hit test, we probably shouldn't hit uh, an invisible layer. So like if this is, is invisible and then I'm mucking around with this layer and I click here, um, I shouldn't hit an invisible layer because if you have an invisible layer on top of a visible one I click here this is not the expected result right so let's see um, do we have mouse down mm. layer at editor position oh man flashbacks to coordinate math evening um, Right, so here, when we iterate the layer stack, we'll just say, uh, if layer is visible, is not visible, then skip over it. Yeah. Notice how we are uh, distinguishing between non-visible layers and zero opacity layers. Like if you have a zero opacity layer, but it's still visible, then, then I think it's still fine that you click and you get it, but yeah. Let's not do that. Um, that system server changed. Uh, we don't want that one. Uh, don't uh, hit test in non visible layers. Layers. Okay, so now let's tidy up the um, property switch it a little bit because because it wasn't looking super nice. So let's see, layer properties widget. Maybe we will. Uh, I guess we can set a height on some of these things. Set preferred size. Zero width, maybe twenty pixels tall. Something like that. And 
for the opacity slider. Um, we can do, I don't know, 30 pixel stall. Maybe we should also have a label for the opacity. So we'll have an opacity label. Like this, right? But it would not be bold. And yeah, there we go. Mm. Actually, maybe we should put this whole thing in a group box now that I think about it. I wonder if that would look nice. Mm. Let's try it. Group boxes are pretty sweet. So let's see. So that's our layout, sure. And then um, group box. Actually, yeah, we'll do this. So it won't be a label, this thing, but it'll be group box instead. And then we'll put everybody in the group box. And we'll make the group box have a vertical box layout as well. Okay, so you go in the group box, you go in the group box, everybody goes in the group box. Hmm. Maybe we should do the checkbox here as well. Okay, let's, let's try it. Hmm. Okay, this, <laughs> um, it needs a little bit of help, but generally I think we can work with this. Why does it look so goofy? In the widget gallery, it looks pretty good with the group boxes. Mm, maybe we're using spacing or something here. Um, let's see. So I'll say layout, layout, set margins. Let's put a hefty margin. And let's um, set text alignment um, left, center left, right. Let's we'll see, we're going to bring this together. Awkward, to be honest, um, but it's getting better. I wonder if this thing should be bold. It wouldn't look quite right. Opacity. This looks really out of place. Um, Maybe like an icon would be a better way to, to show this. I'm not sure, but um, that's something that we could, we could definitely like improve later if we can maybe like make an icon that means uh, opacity, um, then, then we can use that instead of having to write out opacity. I'm not sure. Um, should we put opacity to the left of this thing? Maybe that would look better. Let's try it. So, we'll just make a container here. So, widget. And we'll put these guys in that thing. Set layout. Gooey. 
horizontal box layout. And then we'll make the opacity container be specific height. Um, Okay, I actually kind of like this better. Um, but now I wish there would be a lot more, <clears throat> a lot more margin here. Um, <clears throat> so let's see. Well, let's put a chunk here, so sixteen. And you know what? Let's let lift these guys in a bit as well. Uh, let's bring that up to twenty. And maybe we should make the opacity thing not quite so, not quite so uh, narrow, or not not use half of the horizontal space. So we'll say that he only uses eighty pixels. Okay, starting to look a little bit better. Still not perfect, but it is pretty good. And then if you don't select the layer, then it becomes disabled. That's very cool. We can also add um, a way to edit the name of the layer, actually. That would be nice. So let's add a text box here. First, let's just say, um, ah, dang it. Pixel paint, tidy up the layer uh, properties, widget, GUI layout, and bit. Okay, and then text box, name text box. Okay, let's get serious. So we'll put that up top. Because the most interesting thing about a layer, I think, is his name. So, it's a whole bunch of code actually to do that, but uh, let's see. These nested layouts, I don't I don't love the way they work. We could probably do better. Uh, the fact that you have to create a widget and put it in to your layout and then put a layout in that widget. It would be nice if you could just put a layout inside of a layout uh, instead of putting a widget with a layout inside of your layout. Um, but I don't know. So this will be name label. And this will be name container. And of course, name text box. Not to forget. Um, and then we'll have text box. Okay, so then we have on change for that, which we'll just do set name, name text box text. Cool, and then this, this needs to do a um, send out some notification when this happens actually. So um, set name. If my name is already name, ignore. Name is name. Image layer did modify properties. Um, oh, 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 what did I forget? Something stupid. I am instantiating it as a slider somewhere. Where are we? Name text box, here. Okay, but we need to do the data transfer also. So, 
here when we select the new layer. So uh, name text box is set text layer name. Yes. Look at that. Hmm. Oh, and now we have this problem here instead. I can't type the O character because now we're in this window. And this window, this guy takes the O. Hmm. Yeah, that's something that we need to um, do better. So if the current widget how should that work if we think about it so the currently selected widget should get a chance to look at the key stroke before we do shortcuts and if the current widget actually um, accepts the event then we shouldn't pass it to the um, shortcut lookup probably but the fact that i can edit these names very, very cool. So, okay, we are going places with this, very much so. All right. Takes a little paint. Uh, great for editing uh, layer names. Okay, so that shortcut thing. I guess this would be in the Windows Server connection. Action for key event. Yeah, 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 right. So we have an incoming key down message from the Windows Server. And then the first thing we do is we look at our focused widget. So the first thing we do is we look for an action. And if we don't find an action, then we post an event to the event loop. Hmm. Okay. I guess this needs to be reorganized in some way, um, but I don't want to get into that right now because I feel like we're at a pretty good rounding off point. So I'll just leave it uh, unable to type O into layer names for now, um, but that'll be something that we need to fix, of course. Anyway, yeah, so this will be the end of today's video. Um, we got a lot of nice things done. We at least made it so that uh, window scoped actions are now actually window scoped. Um, we added um, a way to draw scaled images with an override alpha. We added the ability to edit uh, properties on these layers and you can see them changing live uh, and I think that's pretty nice pretty good progress so it's fun to work on pixel paint again and if you made it this far thank you for watching I hope that you saw something interesting and I will see you next time